Hello and welcome to another Hardcore Nuzlocke. Today I want to attempt a run of Pokemon Emerald using only the Fire type. This is a run regarded by the Nuzlocke community as a very difficult, near impossible run. With some sheer determination and dumb luck, this run is doable. I don't have any luck, and I have some sheer determination. I think if we couple that with my tenacity and stupidity, we should be able to beat this run. This is the hardest run I have ever done. The fighting only run that I did of Pokemon Emerald had 30 something attempts. Tate and Liza were the only obstacles in that. Before Tate and Liza and after Tate and Liza, we had no problem. This run, every single gym is going to be a potential run ender. Every single battle that we get into could be a run ender. We have to play this one very smart and we're going to have to be on top of our game. I don't know necessarily if we're going to beat this run because we have some severe challenges. The 7th, the 8th gym, and of course Drake and the champion Wallace are going to be a problem. There are technically 7 encounters that we can get to. Two of them are post-game, so we're not going to be able to use them in this run. Houndour can be found in the Safari Zone after you beat the Elite Four. And Cyndaquil is a gifted Pokemon by Professor Birch after completing the decks. That leaves us with five encounters. Torchic, the starter, Numel, Slugma, Torkoal, and eventually Vulpix. There is a sixth Pokemon that we can use that is technically a fire type that a lot of people probably aren't thinking about, and that is Cast Form. I'm going to allow Cast Form as a fire type to have a full team but there are going to be some rules the first rule is that cast form has to be in its fire type to attack so we either a have to use sunny day or switch it out those are the rules it's going to round out the team and give us six members and cast form is going to become a very important part of the team for the first three gyms we're only going to be using our starter so this is going to be a very interesting run a couple of things to note Three of our six encounters are victims of the lack of physical special split. Camerupt is a ground fire type, ground being physical, fire is special, Magcargo is part rock type, rock is physical, and Blaziken is eventually is part fighting. So we're going to have to deal with that accordingly. The other thing that we're going to have to deal with is the fact that Torchic is very weak to all of Roxanne's Pokemon, unlike Fire Red. Roxanne's Pokemon know Rock Tomb and Rock Throw, so this is going to be a very, very difficult first gym. In my head, I named our rival Algorithm because that is what we are trying to beat in real life, the Algorithm. You guys can help me beat that in real life by liking the video, commenting, and subscribing to the channel. Many of you are coming back every week, and a lot of you guys aren't subscribed, so check it out. See if you are, it helps out a lot, it costs you nothing. This video right here has taken me over a month to make. I work a full-time job, 40 to 60 hours a week. I have a kids, a wife, a house, the whole nine yards. Every spare moment I had, we worked on this video. Clips, recordings, research. It has taken so much time, so if you guys could take just a little bit of time to show a little appreciation, it would help out so much. Thank you guys for the continued support. Let's bump this channel to be something amazing. So we named our Torchic Chimpkin. It has a naughty plus attack nature, and this thing has really good IVs. We spent a bunch of time resetting to get a good Pokemon here. I'm going to save my game, and if I wipe, this is where we're going to restart is with this same Chimpkin. I normally don't do that, but... I need to do some serious EV training, minimum battles, there's a bunch of stuff to do for a slight chance to beat Roxanne, and I don't want to spend a ton of time resetting when I've already spent many, many hours getting this Pokemon. The May battle, a trainer outside of Oldale, and a Team Aqua member in Petalburg are the only mandatory battles that we have to do before the first gym fight. After some math, that gives us 2100 experience to keep us below the level cap. Level 5 Silcoons give... Two defense EVs at 50 experience points. Level 5 Cascoons give the same defense EVs at 51 experience. So if we only fight Silcoons, we can get 86 defense EVs. And I think defense is what we need to do to try to survive as many rock moves as we can. 
We could train up HP, we could train up special attack, but I don't think that's going to help us. So with some EV training, our stats are, are HP is 43, attack is 29, defense is 24, special attack is 30, special defense is 21, and speed is 23. I'm going to give Chimpkin an Orenberry. Hopefully that will allow us to survive one more attack. We need a lot of things to happen in this battle. Critical hits from us would be great, not the other way around. Misses of Rock Tomb or Rock Throw would be great. A Burn would be awesome. That halves their attack damage. We'd be able to survive a little bit longer. Geodude using Defense Curl would be great. Misses on Rock Tomb or Rock Throw would be amazing as well. That's a lot of RNG, and I don't know if it's going to happen. Turn 1, we fire off an Ember, and we don't get a Burn, but Geodude does go for a Defense Curl. Turn 2, I decide to set up a Focus Energy to try to boost that critical hit chance. And Geodude misses a Rock Tomb. That is huge. We fire off another Ember. It doesn't do a lot of damage. It doesn't look like it's a 3-shot. And we get hit with that Rock Tomb that does half our health. It also lowers our speed, which is terrible. But these Rock-type Pokemon are slow. Orenberry activates, pulling us past half health. And we hit it with another Ember. And this time, we get the Burn. That's great but not great. Geodude misses its Rock Tomb and the burn finishes off the first Geodude. Amazing. We're still sitting at pretty decent health as the second Geodude comes out. Once again, same thing. We go for Ember. Again, it's not a, quite a three shot. Geodude goes for Defense Curl. Go for Ember again and we get a critical hit down to a sliver of health. We get hit with a Rock Tomb that is unfortunate. That pulls us down to 14 HP. We cannot survive another attack. Roxanne does go for a potion. We hit it with an ember back down to red health. And Roxanne heals up with another potion. These potions and nose passes Ornberry are going to make this battle very difficult. We do manage to fire back-to-back -back embers to knock out the second Geodude. But unfortunately, as nose pass comes out... It outspeeds us and takes us out with a Rock Tomb. On attempt 2, I decide to train up Special Attack. It's at 32 and our defense has dropped down to 21. Really, the EV training isn't making a lot of a difference, but that little bit does matter. We have the Orenberry equipped. We're ready for attempt number 2. We start off by firing off an Ember that actually gets a critical hit. That is amazing, down to low yellow health. Judude, however, does hit us with a Rock Tomb, and this is where we can see the defense EVs. We got knocked down to 18 HP. Orenberry does activate, pulling us up to 28 HP, and Roxanne goes for a potion. That is annoying. We do hit an Ember, and Ember is doing a decent amount of damage, more than it was. After a second Ember, we're at back down to yellow health where we started, and we get hit with another rock tomb this drops us down to three hp that's unfortunate we do knock out the first geodude with one more ember and out comes the second geodude we fire off an ember first turn and it does a significant amount of damage over half of its health unfortunately geodude connects with a rock tomb knocking us out ending attempt number two so let's talk strategy Throwing ourselves repetitively at Roxanne is a strategy. I think the special attack EVs is better than the defense EVs. However, getting the 42 Silcoons that we need to fight in Petalburg Woods was a lot easier than the 42 Ralts that we can find. That took a few hours because Ralts is a rare encounter. But the special attack was doing better than the defense. It doesn't matter what we have for defense. With the Orin Barrier, we can only survive three attacks. There are some other options. We can take a look at Torchic's egg move list, and if we look at it now, we can learn the fighting type move reversal or counter. Counter is a negative priority move that deals back double the damage of a physical attack. That's not really a viable option. Counter also doesn't deal back fighting damage, meaning if we got hit with Rock Tomb and then hit her Pokemon with counter, it's not super effective. So that's not really an option because we can only survive three attacks and we're going to get attacked three times. 
Reversal is the fighting equivalent of Flail. The less our health is, the higher the damage is of the move, and it does do fighting damage, so it is super effective against her Pokemon. Both are great options. Another option we have is just let Torchic get to level 16, that's one level over the level cap, evolve into Combusken, learn Double Kick, and make short work of Roxanne. All are great options, and of course, we're going to explore them all. I did less EV training to keep our experience lower. If we double level in this battle going from level 15 to 16 to 17, Torchic will evolve, but it will not learn Double Kick because it has to evolve at level 16, turn into a Combusken, and then it'll learn Double Kick. And I don't want to lose out on that, so we didn't do as much defense EV training. The first attack... I decided to go for Ember because Ember is actually going to do a little bit more damage when we're at full health. It does what it did before, roughly about a third, and we get hit with Rock Tomb. This pulls us down to 21 HP, and our berry activates. I decided to go for Reversal to see how much it'll do, and it's doing about as much as Ember at this HP, and we get hit with a Rock Tomb. Unfortunately, because of the speed drops... We're not going to outspeed the nose pass. Reversal is going to knock out this Geodude, however. It's at max power. The next Geodude comes out, and we outspeed it, and we hit it with a Reversal to one-shot it. If we outsped, we would win this battle. Unfortunately, we don't outspeed. The nose pass comes out and goes for Harden. Okay, that I did not expect. We go for Reversal. And it doesn't do a lot of damage. Oh my goodness. Nosepass is bulky. Well, that's attempt three. Every single attempt since attempt three, we can make it to Nosepass. But because of the sheer bulk, we're never going to get past Nosepass. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. And if I would have paid attention to attempt number three as closely as I am now that I'm voicing it over... We would have stopped trying reversal immediately, but we tried it a few more times. I did want to go ahead and show off learning counter. We get hit with Rock Tomb on the first Geodude, and it does half of our health, lowers our speed. That's the biggest problem with Nose Pass, but counter does knock it out. We get hit with Rock Tomb and knock out the second one, and we're sitting at 5 HP. With two speed drops, we will not outspeed the Nose Pass, and it knocks us out with a tackle. Now, some of you aren't going to be happy, but I went ahead and let Chimpkin evolve into Combuskin. I need to get past this gym. The rest of these gyms are going to be just as difficult, so I want to get through it. Having only one Pokemon and limited moves, so on and so forth, it is very difficult. As you guys get on your keyboard and tell me how this isn't a valid run and I'm a terrible Nuzlocker, hit send. I love the comments. It tells the algorithm that you're engaging in my videos, so keep them coming. But also keep in mind that I work a full-time job, 40 to 60 hours. I travel for work. I've got a wife, five kids, a house, two dogs, cars. There's a lot going on, and I do all of the recording, all of the voiceover, all of the editing. Every bit of these videos is done by me. So as you hit send on that comment, why don't you take a second and put yourself in the same time restraints and try to make this video. If you're successful in doing that, tag me in the video and I'll watch it, and I'll give some positive feedback. Also, don't write a script, because I don't write a script for these videos. Here is a picture of my notes. Each line is a clip, and I do my voiceover after that. And sometimes, like this clip, it takes a few takes. I've done this video recording ten times before I got the voiceover right. I'm not from Missouri, but I am a show-me type of person, so if you think you can do it better, don't just talk about it, be about it. Tag me in the video, I'll watch it, I'll be positive, I won't even be negative, but just know, I might not have very good luck, but one thing I do have that's better than most is time management skills. Leaving Rustboro, we have a rival battle. She leads with a Torkoal, which is a Pokemon we're going to be able to get our hands on. Torkoal, defensively, is a monster. As seen here with our double kicks, it doesn't take it out. Torkoal just sets up Curse, which doesn't mean anything for us. We take it out with another Double Kick. Mudkip comes out, and we outspeed it, and we take it out with a single Double Kick. It was a critical hit, but this thing wasn't going to survive a single attack from us. I did some EV training into attack before this battle because we're going to have to use the physical move Peck. 
Machop has guts, so if we burn it with Ember, it's going to take us out very quickly, and Makuhita has thick fat, so Ember's damage is halved. Peck does quite a bit of damage, taking Machop down to about a quarter of its health. It just decides to set up a bulk up. A follow-up Peck takes out the Machop. Out comes Metatite, and as always, as long as you attack Metatite, there's nothing it can do against you. The first Peck takes it deep into the red health as it sets up a bulk up. Brawly then uses a Super Potion to fully heal the Metatite, and we take it back down to yellow health with Peck. It tries to go for Focus Punch, which is crazy that thing's a negative priority move. We take it out with another Peck, and out comes Makuhita. We hit Makuhita with a Peck for about three quarters of its health, and it sets up a bulk up. Its Citrus Berry then heals it up to about three quarters of its health, and a Peck takes it back down to yellow health. We get hit with a Vital Throw, which does a lot more damage than I thought it would, but a follow-up Peck wins us the second Gym Badge. Next up is the notorious battle with our rival on Route 110. This is where a lot of Nuzlocke's end. I do need to go back and fully EV train our attack, because that Peck should have taken out Lombre. It hits us with a pretty weak Astonish, and we take it out with a follow-up Peck. Out comes Marshtomp, and we hit it with a double kick that does a significant amount of damage, about three quarters of its life. It fires off a Mud Shot that does a significant amount of damage, down to 30 HP, and it gets the speed drop, which is unfortunate. Our Orenberry pulls us back up to over half health, and we get outsped and hit with a Water Gun that takes us down to 7 HP, I'm biting my nails right now. We take out Marshtomp with a double kick. Out comes Slugma. I don't know what happened to her Torkoal. We need to outspeed this Slugma and connect with a Rock Tomb to take this thing out, which we do, winning us. Oh, the battle. We almost wiped. When in Slateport, it's always good to get a Harbor Mail so that when you come up to Mauville, you can talk to this lady in the very first house and get yourself the coin case. I grabbed a few coins, and now I'm going to play the slots. I need to play the slots for a very long time. I need to get myself 4,000 coins so that we can buy the TM for Flamethrower. I think we're going to need it for Watson. I don't know if that we can beat him without it. So, yeah. I don't know what, what just happened on screen, but I'm just going to play the slots. My eyes are going to go crossed. I'm going to be squinting funny. I'm going to have this weird look on my face. Maybe my hands are going to be all cramped up by the time I'm done with this. Wish me luck. And after a very, very long time and some lack of paying attention, I have just over 4,000 coins. We can get ourselves TM35 for Flamethrower. Very nice. This is the last gym leader that we have to take on with a solo Pokemon before we get some teammates, but before we put the cart in front of the horse, let's try to win this. Voltorb does outspeed us and hit us with a spark. Luckily, it doesn't paralyze. I do have a Cherry Berry because I know Manetric likes to go for Thunder Wave. We take out the Voltorb with a double kick and out comes Electrike. I don't want to use a contact move to activate its static ability, so we go for Flamethrower, and we manage to one-shot the Electrike. Out comes Magneton. It does outspeed us and misses a Supersonic, which is huge. A single Flamethrower is enough to take out the Steel-type Pokemon. And last but not least is Manetric. It goes for Howl, turn 1, and Flamethrower does a significant amount of damage. It does over half of its health. However, that held Cherry Berry pulls it out of a two-shot range. Of course it does. Manetric then goes for that Thunder Wave that we knew was going to happen, and our Cherry Berry heals off the Paralysis. A Flamethrower takes it deep into the yellow health, and Watson uses a Super Potion. We then hit it with a Flamethrower back down to half health, and we get hit with a Shock Wave, which does a surprising amount of damage. Luckily, we took very minimal damage this battle a follow-up flamethrower wins us the third gym badge we then get our next encounter on route 112 a numal named loaf it has a jolly plus speed nature that's a terrible nature but it is another member on the team i'll take it fiery path has an option for three different encounters for us and we want to make sure that before we get our encounter to repel through the fiery path 
We can find Numal, Slugma, and Torkoal here, so to ensure the Torkoal encounter, we need to get out to Route 113 and catch ourselves a Slugma named Boof. It has a quiet plus special attack minus speed nature. Minus speed is never great, but this thing isn't very fast anyway. This guarantees us a Torkoal that we can get in the fiery path, and this thing has an adamant plus attack minus special attack nature. That is awesome. We named it Chonk for obvious reasons. Flannery does have an opportunity to take us out with some of her Pokemon. We have a couple of weak ones on our team, but set up strats with Chonk ensures that we will sweep. Turn one, Numal out, speeds us and hits a pretty decent magnitude seven. However, our defense is so high that we only take 21 points of damage. We then start setting up curses. Numal tries to set up the sun, tries for takedowns, different strats as we set up curses. I was going to go for four, but my health was sitting pretty decent, so I go ahead and set up a fifth curse. It's at that point that Numal uses takedown and drops us to 48 HP, and we knock it out with a single return. Out comes Slugma. Slugma decides that our physical attacks need to be blocked by a light screen, which doesn't make sense and we knock it out with a return. As Camerupt comes out, the sunlight fades, so Camerupt decides it's time to reset up the sunny day, and we knock it out with a return. Torkoal comes out, and what surprises me is with the sun up and the fact that we have so many defense buffs, Torkoal doesn't go for overheat, it instead goes for body slam. It does not get the paralysis, which is nice. I had a cherry berry. It only does five ticks of damage, and our return cleanly one-shots the Torkoal, winning us the fourth gym. For our deadbeat, we're going to lead with Chimkin. You guys know what we're going to do here. We're going to set up a bulk up. Spinda typically goes for Teeter Dance, so I have a Person Berry. However, Spinda this time decides to go for a Side Beam, which is really weird. Since it does a significant amount of damage, I decide next turn, let's take this thing out. A Double Kick does take out the Spinda. Out comes Vigoroth, and Vigoroth is faster than us, and it hits us with a pretty nasty slash. We do get off a double kick that takes out the Vigoroth. Out comes Lanoon, and Lanoon actually outspeeds us to go for Belly Drum, which is perfect. That means our double kick takes it out, bringing us all the way to Slacking. Now, Slacking is a pretty beastly Pokemon. I decide it's not worth any kind of risk. We're going to send out Chonk. And it was a good thing we did because we get hit with a facade on the switch that does 33 ticks of damage. That's pretty strong considering. I start setting up curses and we alternate curse and protect, curse and protect so that we don't get hit. We don't get hit with yawn. We don't get hit with any kind of status moves. And we do set up to plus six attack, plus six defense. It's at this point that we finally fire off a return and surprisingly enough, a plus six boosted return didn't one-shot the Slacking. I think that was a really low roll. The Citrus Berry activates and heals the Slacking up. I'm not sure if it's out of potion range, so I go for Protect, and Norman uses a Hyper Potion. Now, technically, that is Slacking's attacking turn, so I can get back-to-back -back returns. We fire off another return. This one, however, gets a higher roll, and we one-shot the Slacking like we should have the first time. In the Weather Institute, we get cast form named Derp. It has a lax plus defense, minus special defense nature. This thing is gonna be a great versatile Pokemon with its deep move pool. I cannot wait to start using this thing. We have a rival battle on Route 119 where I decide to lead with Derp. Now this is a little bit cheeky because it's raining, but I wanna use Derp to set up the sun. We haven't leveled this thing up or done anything with it. We immediately left the Weather Institute. We do get hit with a fake out on turn one for some chip damage, and then Lombre does outspeed us and hit us with a Nature Power Swift. That allows me to set up the sun, and now I can swap out into Loaf. We get hit with another Swift, and because we're slower than Lombre, we get hit with another Swift before we can fire off a pretty strong sun-boosted neutral flamethrower that leaves Lombre with a tick of health. We get outsped again and hit with a swift, and a follow-up flamethrower takes out the Lombre. Out comes Marstomp, and I decide we need to swap, because this thing does have some decent moves, and I swap into Chonk. We get hit with a mud shot on the swap. It does not get the speed drop, but that really doesn't matter.
We get hit with a takedown, and then we fire off a very strong return that does about five-eighths of Marstomp's health. It then just goes for Mudsport, which is a really weird decision. The sunlight has faded. There's no rain, which is really awesome. And we take out Marstomp with a return. Out comes Slugma, and we outspeed it and take it out with a return. And that is our rival done before Fortree City. Just like in our ground type run, I decide to lead with Loaf against the Swablu. It evolves at the level cap, it learns Rock Slide, and it's going to bait out the Pelipper. Swablu outspeeds us and go for Mirror Move. We connect with a Rock Slide to one-shot the Swablu. As predicted, Pelipper comes out, so I swap into Derp, who gets hit with a Water Gun on the Swap. Pelipper then goes for Protect, as it normally does while we set up the Sun. It's at this point I can fire off a quad super effective Thunderbolt, cleanly one-shotting the Pelipper. Out next for Winona is her Altaria, who is quad weak to ice. Her Tropius is quad weak to ice, and her Skarmory is weak to a fire-powered weather ball. Quad Ice Beam takes out the Altaria with one hit. Out comes Skarmory, and we fire off a weather ball that is enough to one-shot it. And last but not least is Tropius. I actually misclick on the Tropius. It outspeeds us and hits us with an Aerial Ace that doesn't do a lot of damage, but we fire off a Weather Ball that does in fact KO the Tropius in one hit. It's weird. This part of the run, normally I'm grabbing the Poke Block case. I've got a specific bike in my inventory and we're heading for an encounter in the Safari Zone. This time we're not. We're just heading to Mount Pyre to round out the team with our sixth and final member. It's kind of nice. The last couple of gyms have been relatively easy. They could have gone south really fast, but it's nice to have a little bit of breathing room before we get into the last part of the game because it is going to be quite challenging. We catch ourselves a Vulpix named Pupper. It has a Rash plus special attack nature, which is awesome, and it's female, which is great. Might be able to use some attract strats. I finished this stuff on Mount Pyre and I head back to the fiery path. With strength in hand, we can move this boulder and we can get access to a very important item. There's also a pretty important TM that may or may not come in handy later on in the game. I don't know yet. I don't know why we have to push all of these boulders, but if you head to the top side of this, we can get the toxic TM and then we can head down to the bottom and we can get ourselves a firestone. Pupper already has most of the moves that I want it to know. It's already learned flamethrower. So everything else is going to be via TM. We might as well evolve this thing and get some special attack bulk on the team. Most of these fire type Pokemon, I think it's in generation four, actually get access to the move Solar Beam, but none of these Pokemon have it in this game. So we're going to have to use some strats with Confuse Ray and Sunny Day and maybe Attract, will o -Wisps, things like that. It's nice to add some special attack to the team because Derp has been the only one that's able to use any special type moves. Everything else is physical. I normally don't fight the rival outside of the department store, but I want to get the TMs for Reflect and Light Screen. Boof can learn those moves and they may come in handy in the upcoming Tate and Liza battle. Derp single-handedly beat all of Algo's Pokemon. We did have to set up a second sunny day, but there was nothing really worthwhile talking about Derp is a pretty good Pokemon and has quickly become one of my favorites moving right up the ladder. I've used this thing many times and I'm happy we get to use it again. My plan for Tate and Liza is to lead with Pupper and Boof. I know that seems like an odd combination, but with a little bit of RNG, this will work. Pupper is faster than all of the other Pokemon, so Pupper is going to hit first. And what our plan is, is to confuse the Clay Doll and then hit it with a Yawn. We get the Confuse Ray off on the Clay Doll, and Zatu turns around and confuses Pupper. We need Clay Doll to hurt itself in confusion twice, and it hurts itself in confusion turn one. Amazing. We get the Yawn off with Boof on the Clay Doll. Turn two, Pupper does hurt itself in confusion. Zatu hits a pretty decent Psychic into Boof for over half of its health. Clay Doll hurts itself again in Confusion. That is amazing. And we get off a very nice rock throw for just over half health on Zatu. Clay Doll falls asleep. I then decide it's time to take the Zatu out. So I use Flamethrower against it. And the Lunatone comes out. 
Claydol stays asleep, and I should have used Yawn on the Lunatone, but I set up a Reflect. We go ahead and set up a Confuse Ray on the Lunatone. Claydol stays asleep. Lunatone hurts itself in Confusion, and we get a Yawn off on the Lunatone. That is a doubled up amazing. We set up the Sun with Pupper next turn. Claydol stays asleep. Lunatone puts Boof to sleep, so we swap Boof out for Derp. We use Flamethrower with the Sun to KO the Clay Doll, and out comes Soul Rock. Lunatone stays asleep. We double up Flamethrower Solar Beam combo to knock out the Soul Rock, and on the next turn, with Lunatone still asleep, we double up Flamethrower and Solar Beam to KO it. Luckily, berries don't activate until the end of turn, and the way these double battles work, we played around with that a little bit and was able to beat Tate and Liza. Relatively easy, but the time and thought and the RNG that went into this was amazing. I know that looked rather effortless, but trust me, that was an insane battle with Tate and Liza. The RNG worked in our favor with confusion luck and putting everybody to sleep. Had we lost Boof, it wouldn't have been the end of the world, but I do need Boof to get to the Elite Four, get through the Elite Four, and I really need all six of these Pokemon to make it to the champion. Unfortunately... Not everybody's going to survive the champion. But first, we have the 8th gym to battle. Now, some of you may have the opinion that we were going to use Chonk to do a sweep here, but setting up and all of that stuff, it's just not a viable strategy in my head. I think Derp is going to do this better. Turn 1, we set up the Sun. Love Disc goes for Water Pulse, but because of the Sun, it is a very weak attack. We don't get hit with Confusion, which is awesome because I have the Miracle Seed equipped instead. We did go to the Safari Zone and get the TM for Solar Beam. We knock out the Love Disc with a Solar Beam. We outspeed Celio and knock it out with the Solar Beam. We outspeed Whizcash and knock it out with a Solar Beam. We outspeed Crawdont and knock it out with a Solar Beam. As the Kingdra comes out, the sunlight fades. All that speed EV training really did pay off. I have to set up the sun again, and Kingdra goes for double team. I then fire off a pretty strong solar beam that doesn't quite do half, and Kingdra sets up another double team. I miss a solar beam, and Kingdra decides to go for a rest. It has a held chesto berry, so it immediately wakes up, and we hit it with a solar beam. Kingdra goes for a third double team. We break through that plus three evasion and hit it with another solar beam down to a sliver of red health. And Kingdra read it and went for rest. The sunlight then fades, so we have to set up the sun again, and Kingdra stays asleep. I then switch it up for Ice Beam. It does about a third. Kingdra stays asleep. We break through the plus three evasion to hit it with another ice beam down to a third health and Kingdra wakes up and immediately uses rest again. This is annoying. We hit it with an ice beam. It stays asleep. We miss an ice beam. Kingdra's asleep. Had I not missed that ice beam, this would have been a lot better. And we have to set up the sun. Kingdra hits us with an ice beam once it wakes up. I fire off an Ice Beam against it down to yellow health, and it goes for rest. This is getting annoying. I hit it with another Ice Beam for a third of its health. We follow up with another Ice Beam while Kingdra stays asleep. And on the final turn, while Kingdra's asleep, I managed to break through the plus three evasion and hit it with a Solar Beam. The fact that we only missed two attacks that whole time is insane. Our team of six Pokemon have overcome many a great odds to make it to the Elite Four. They've each all played a vital role in getting here, and their work is not yet done. We stand here in the Elite Four, formed a circle, making up a plan. Move sets are being dished out, TMs are being taught, held items are being held, and everybody has a job to do. All six of these Pokemon have made it this far, and all six of these Pokemon need to make it through four more trainers. They all know their jobs, they all know what's at stake, but they also know that not all of them are going to make it to the end of this challenge. Once we walk through those double doors, that's the beginning of the end. Everybody is fine with that, they know their roles, they're ready to sacrifice for the greater of the team, Without further ado, let's get these guys in there 
and make an attempt. Normally I would strategize with all my different Pokemon and try to use adverse Pokemon through the Elite Four, but let's be honest, three of my Pokemon are slow, three of them are fast. We lead with Chimkin who takes the Intimidate. I decide to go for a bulk up to get us back to neutral attack. Normally Mightyena likes to go for Swagger, but this time it goes for Sand Attack. That doesn't matter. A stab super effective Brick Break is enough to knock out the Mightyena. Out comes Shiftry. A stab super effective Brick Break is enough to take out the Shiftry. Next up is his Ace Absol, and we fire off a Brick Break cleanly one-shotting it. Crawdont comes out and falls to a single Brick Break as well. And last but not least is Cacturn, who also falls to a single Brick Break. Let's get through these Elite Four members as quickly as possible. I'm pretty sure that Ninetales can learn Shadow Ball in future generations, but it can't in this one. And it doesn't matter because Ghost is physical. So my plan is to set up a sunny day while the lead Dusclops uses Protect. We then fire off a Sun Boosted Stab, not super effective, <laughs> a Stab Flamethrower, and it cleanly one-shots the Dusclops. Out comes her Ace Dusclops, and we hit it with a flamethrower that doesn't quite take it out. It does get the burn, so the earthquake that comes in doesn't do that much damage. Citrus Berry heals this thing up and pulls it just far enough out of healing range, so a follow-up flamethrower takes out the Dusclops. Out comes one of her bayonets, and we cleanly one-shot it with flamethrower. Next up is Sableye. The sun fades, so I reset up the sun. Not sure if that we can one-shot these guys without it, and Sableye just goes for double team. We one-shot the Sableye with Flamethrower, and the last Bayonet falls the exact same way. Against Glacia, we only have one option here because some of her Pokemon do know Water-type moves, and that's Chimkin with his Fighting moves. All of these Pokemon are part Ice. Turn 1, Celio likes to set up the Hail, so I get a plus 1 with Bulk Up, and Celio doesn't disappoint setting up the Hail. We then cleanly one-shot the Celio with a Stab Super Effective Brick Break, and out comes Glacia's ace, Walrein. This makes me extremely nervous. We fire off a Brick Break, and I hope it's enough to take it out. And it does. It was a critical hit. I don't know if that mattered. I don't care. It's a one-shot. That's it. Game over. We win. The first Glalie comes out. We outspeed all of her Pokemon and one-shot them. Glalie goes down to a Brick Break. The second Celio goes down to a Brick Break. The hail stops as the last Glalie comes out, and we KO it with a Brick Break. The real challenge of the Elite Four is now. Can Derp beat Drake's Dragons? I don't know. Let's find out. Turn 1, Shelgon loves to go for Protect, so that gives us a free turn to set up Sunny Day. Turn 2, we fire off a super effective Ice Beam, taking out the Shelgon. I do have the Never Melt Ice item equipped, I did spend a lot of time getting different held items for this run. Flygon comes out and he's quad weak to Ice Beam, so he goes down to a single Ice Beam and out comes Salamence. This is the moment of truth. The Intimidate drop does not matter. What does matter is that we outspeed the Dragon. We click Ice Beam and we outspeed it. The quad weakness to Ice is enough to take it out and out comes Kingdra. Amazing. We do outspeed the Kingdra and hit it with an Ice Beam that gets a critical hit, and that is clutch against the Kingdra. Kingdra then sets up Dragon Dance, which is very scary, and the sunlight fades. Kingdra outspeeds us on the next turn and goes for another Dragon Dance, and we set up the sun. My heart hits my throat. Kingdra outspeeds us and goes for another Dragon Dance because it's greedy and it wanted to throw the battle. A follow-up Ice Beam takes out the Kingdra. Like I said, that was a clutch critical hit. Last for Drake is his Altaria, who we outspeed and take out with a quad super effective Ice Beam. Our little Cloud Man has taken out a team of legendary dragons. Amazing. I need to set up against the champion, but at first we're going to have to get rid of all of its Water Spout power points, which it only has five. Pupper actually has Hidden Power Grass, so I fire off a Hidden Power to do some serious damage so that Water Spout is severely weakened. It is a move based on your HP. We do well over half, and Wailord does fire off with a Water Spout that doesn't quite do half. I then set up a Sunny Day to further weaken the power of Water Spout, 
and it works very well because the next water spout only takes us down to 57 HP. I then decide to swap out Boof because I'm not ready to let go of Pupper, and this was Boof's whole thing coming into the Elite Four. He knew his role. He tanks a water spout like a champion. I just click Yawn. It doesn't matter. We get out sped and taken out with another water spout. Out comes Loaf. Loaf is not very fast and does bait the final water spout that takes us down to 45 HP. I'm surprised we survived that. We do fire off with a tackle. Unfortunately, I don't need Loaf out there anymore, so I swap back into Pupper, and when I swap in, we get hit with a nasty double edge down to 5 HP. Wallace then goes for a full restore on Waylord, and I set up the Sun. That was a mistake on my part. I then go for Confuse Ray against the Waylord, and at it's at this point that I am trying to get knocked out so we can get Chimpkin in for free. Blizzard misses, so I go for Attract, and Waylord fights through Attract and Confusion to knock us out with a double edge. Chimpkin gets in for free and immediately starts setting up bulk ups. Waylord goes for a Rain Dance, which is weird. I set up another bulk up, and we get hit with a double edge that doesn't do a lot of damage. I set up a third bulk up and blizzard misses i set up a fourth bulk up and blizzard connects getting a critical hit down to 75 hp it's at this point that i decide it's time to start attacking and we go for brick break against the whale lord we are four minutes and 17 seconds in by the time all of this has transpired and we knock out the whale lord with a brick break out comes ludicolo we one shot it with a single return out comes Wizcash, and we take it out with a Brick Break. Melodic comes out, and we take it out with a Brick Break. Next is Tentacruel, who we take out with a super effective Earthquake. And last is Gyarados, who hits us with an Intimidate, bringing us only to plus three attack. I do have some other Pokemon in the back, just in case. But I decide to fire off a return, cross my fingers, hold my breath, and see if it's enough to win us the battle. And it is. We have beaten a water champion with our team of fire types, losing only Pupper and Boof in the process. Boof and Loaf were the two that were supposed to be sacked. Unfortunately, Pupper went down, but it is the end of the run. We still have four out of six teammates. That was an amazing finish to an amazing run. I had so much fun doing this. Like I said, I know that Roxanne, we kind of cheesed her, but we had so many hurdles to get through. We could have been on attempt 39 and finally beaten her. I just don't have the time and I wanted to get this run up. I hope you guys enjoyed it nonetheless. This is the first time using fire type Pokemon and in generation three, to be honest with you, they're not that great. They suffer from the lack of physical special split. They don't have great moves. They don't have great bulks and their dual typings leave a lot to be desired. Nonetheless, I had 10 tons of fun and I love running through Pokemon Emerald. I hope you guys enjoyed this run. If you did, you know the routine. Like, comment, subscribe to the channel. And as we look at the time just before we end the video, that is not the actual time because I have done how many attempts? <laughs> I've got I've got a lot of time in this, almost 60 hours worth total. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you on the next one.